When you sign up for the military, you know you're putting, putting your life on the line, but who would have thought that for hundreds of thousands of Marines, the lives of their wives and children would be in jeopardy too? It was a North Carolina military base with a toxic secret, one that a few determined men and a famous environmentalist are now fighting to bring to light. Here's my co-anchor Cynthia McFadden with tonight's Nightline Investigates. Homeowners are demanding that the federal government act immediately. Love Canal. Testimony to the environmental catastrophe. Agent Orange. Just the name of it evokes all sorts of horrible images. Names that conjure a sad legacy of environmental disasters. Hollywood even made a movie about one such mess. My name is Aaron and I've brought some information today. In which Julia Roberts plays Aaron Brockovich, the tough-talking broad turned environmental crusader. You're sick and your kids are sick because of those lies. The real Aaron Brockovich now travels the country. I'm not taking it anymore! Working for a law firm to mobilize people to fight against pollutants in their own backyards. Her latest target may surprise you, the U.S. Marine Corps. The issue, what may be the largest water contamination in American history. It happened here, of all places, Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, the largest training base for Marines in the world. For a 30-year stretch until the mid-1980s, the Marines of Lejeune and their families drank water laced with cancer-causing chemicals like benzene. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands were exposed. Many died, and others are still getting sick today. Jerry Ensminger is a career Marine who raised his family at Lejeune. There are people alive that can be helped and need help. That's my priority. Mike Partain has joined him in this crusade. And this is where people were working. I was a drill instructor. I trained over 2,000 new Marines. I'm from Camp Lejeune. There's been a Partain in uniform for four generations. Mike's father was stationed at Lejeune when his mother got pregnant. Today, he's an insurance adjuster in Florida. State Farm, this is Mike. For both yeah, men, the tragedy is personal. Janie died in 1985. When Janie was diagnosed, I went into shock initially. Jerry lost his beloved daughter, Janie, to leukemia when she was just nine years old. She said, I love you. I said, I know. I whispered in her ear, I said, it's time to stop fighting. And Mike himself became sick. In April 2007, I was diagnosed with male breast cancer, which is extremely rare, especially in young men. What happened left both men with the same burning question. Why? Jerry's first clue came 15 years ago from the local news. Residents were exposed to contaminated drinking water. It's been his life's work ever since. The reporter on the television said the contaminants that had been found in Camp Lejeune's drinking water are possibly linked to childhood cancer and birth defects, primarily leukemia. I dropped my plate of spaghetti right there on the living room floor. That started this journey for the truth. All previous sampling in and around Site 22... Documentary filmmakers spent four years chronicling their search for answers. In a film called Semper Fi, Always Faithful the Marine Corps motto. Semper Fi. <laughs> Amazingly, the Marine Corps dragged its feet in notifying those who had lived at Camp Lejeune about the contamination and the possible health consequences. Don't you think you have responsibility to let these people know they may have been exposed? Yes, sir. Then why don't you do it? I could never commit to finding 100% of people who may have been exposed. That would be very difficult. So Jerry and Mike decided it was up to them to do what the Marine Corps couldn't or wouldn't get the word out. The Marine Corps needs to get these people notified, and they need to get on the TV, they need to get on the news, and they need to tell them what happened. You might think the military would be eager to help the vets and their families who lived at Lejeune and are now sick. You'd be wrong. The battle for health care has been going on for years, as have the losses. This is my treasure box that I have of him. Meet the improbably named Mary Freshwater. This is the suit he was wearing the day he died in my arms at 10 minutes past 12, New Year's Eve. This is what I have left of my son. And I had a son born without a cranium. 
Rusty would be 30 years old on the 30th of this month. The pain is no less. But that heartbreak is not the end of her story, as she told us when we visited with her recently at her home in rural North Carolina. You have two different kinds of cancers. Yes, I have uh, acute myeloid and acute lymphoma. And did the doctors say that's unusual? Yes, they said they did a genetic study and the genetic marker showed it wasn't hereditary. It's from a contaminant such as benzene. Which you were exposed to at campus. Yes, yes. Are you angry, Mary? I am angry, but you can't let that destroy you. That won't bring my babies back, and it won't cure me. Mary lived at Camp Lejeune as a young military officer's wife and knows it was not just she who was suffering. We were at a party at one of my friend's house one night. There was five of us in different stages of pregnancy. Every one of us lost our baby to a birth defect. No one at the Marine Corps was willing to talk to us on camera not the Secretary of the Navy or the Head of Veterans Affairs. We did get an email from a Marine Corps representative who assured us that the Commandant of the Marines, General James Amos, quote, considers the issue to be very important. We continue our commitment to find and notify those who use the water during the time period in question. I'm appalled. I'm going many? to help in any way that I can. Recently here in Washington, Jerry has enlisted a little star power, Erin Brockovich, who has two children of her own in uniform. It's scary to see the tens of thousands of people hundreds are going to be afflicted by this. It's insanity. A bill has now been introduced in Congress called the Janie Ensminger Act to provide health care for those from Lejeune who are sick. May God bless Janie. And may God bless you for bestowing this honor upon her. Can you win this? Yeah. Yes. Oh, if we get the truth out, if we get people to understand what we know. And while it may be too late for Janie, for Mary's babies, and for so many others, in a way this fight has formed a new family. For Nightline, I'm Cynthia McFadden at Camp Lejeune. <laughs>